Hi, this is Joe Bull, and today we're going to look at errors. Unfortunately, we will get errors. It's only normal for us to have errors as we code our code, and also get errors as we run our code. Sometimes we would like to think that we're perfect and will not make mistakes, but in fact we do. The important thing is to find those errors and know how to fix them. So let's take a look at the three kinds of errors that we can get in a program. First of all, we can get syntax errors. And this is the kind of error that usually happens when we misspell something or use a reserve or key uh, word of the language that we're programming in incorrectly. Another kind of error we might get is the kind that happens when we have a runtime error. And this is a situation where somewhere during the processing, something happens and we get an exception it's not being handled correctly. And that kind of error pops up to us and uh, shouts to the user, we've got an error and the only course you usually have is to abort the program. And the last kind of error is the real difficult one to solve, and that's the kind called a logic error. And this is a situation where the program compiles perfectly it runs the way we would expect it to run, except it gives us incorrect output because we've made an error in our logic. So let's take a look at these three errors to see what they look like a little bit, and we'll then address how we fix those kind of errors. Let me go into Visual Basic. And I have my simple uh, calculator up on the screen, and we're going to use this as a... Uh, method to see some of the errors we could have with this one. So let me go full screen on this one and let's go to the code that's behind this calculator and one of the kinds of errors we could have is as I'm keying in something I could key in incorrectly a reserved word. For example if I use the word string here, uh, string is a reserved word and as I get out of it this will become an error and you'll see the uh, little squiggly line underneath that says keyword is not valid as an identifier. So one thing is using the keywords or reserve words improperly. So I'll go back to this one. And another thing that could happen is let's say I uh, don't key in properly the full name. For example, if I just said second num instead of second number which I've declared. You'll see once again I've got an error. One thing nice about the Visual Studio uh, environment is it will catch many of our errors that we might have from a syntax point of view. So we can easily catch this one and fix it. And Once I click it the error goes away. And if I had not done that, let's say I left it as second num, with an error and tried to go up and compile it, it would say there was a build error and uh, at that point I have to say no and fix that error. It describes in my error message down here, second num is not declared. It may be inaccessible due to protection level. So I can double click on that and it'll take me to the spot where the error is at. So a syntax error is a very common one. Usually we fat finger some of our uh, variables and as a result we'll have syntax errors. The next kind of error is what's called a runtime uh, exception error and I'm going to show you this one by running the program. And now I have the program up and running and I'm going to key in um, 56 and 0 for the second number and then I'm going to try to do a divide. And you'll see that it stopped and it popped up with an error. My yellow pointer is on the side saying this next statement is to be executed, but it cannot because I'm doing a divide by zero. And this was unhandled and the program stopped. So this is the kind that jumps up and catches us. Normally with good testing we can uh, find these errors. We need to enter in different values into our input fields and find out why we're getting this kind of error and then code 
for the problems that may arise as our program runs and catch those errors before they pop up with this ugly uh, exception error message. The only way to solve this one is to stop the debug and exit the program and come back in and fix that error. The next kind of error is the logic error. Once again, I'll start this one. And let me put in uh, 67 for the first number, uh, 34 for the next one. And let's do a subtraction. Well, that definitely is not correct. It's not doing what we expect it to do. Uh, 67 minus 34 should give me back 30 three for an answer and it gave me the wrong answer no error occurred but the logic behind this was wrong and I'll have to go back in my code and look at it so one of the important lessons of this particular uh, segment is to remember that you need to go in and test for your errors the syntax errors will be caught by the uh, integrated development environment of Visual Studio and we'll see little squiggly lines occur under the words that we haven't spelled correctly or declared properly. But the other kinds of errors, the exception error, is the situation where I need to test the program to see if I can create errors in my program. You have to imagine that you're a user and you're trying to abuse the program in the worst way and see if you can get some kinds of errors to occur. And if you can, then you can code for the problems around that particular error that you've introduced and keep the program from stopping during its execution. The last one, of course, is logic errors. And once again, we have to test our program, make certain that everything is happening the way we want it to have occur. This means that I need to go in and try different input values test those values to make certain I'm getting the correct output at the end of my run on that. So you need to have a method that you employ after you create your program to test that program to make certain that you have not coded any logic errors in. You might not get any program error stoppage, but you will have incorrect information being given back to the user. So those are the three kinds of errors. We've got a syntax error. We've got our exception kind of error with a runtime error. And then we have, lastly, the logic error, which is the most difficult to, to uh, solve and sometimes to even recognize without thoroughly testing our code. So remember, as you're coding, you could accidentally introduce some errors that you had not planned on and expect that you will get errors. You'll need to check for syntax errors. You'll need to check and process uh, to see if you can force errors to cause the program to halt with the runtime exceptions. And you also need to check your program to make certain that the data you put in produces the right kinds of results on that so that you can trust the calculations and process of your computer program. So until then, get your hands dirty, learn about errors. Unfortunately, errors are going to teach us more than we're going to learn um, by planning ahead. We're going to learn by the bruised knee method with the errors. They're going to catch us, and, and as a result, we're going to get better at coding. And so don't feel bad about errors. They're a thing of, that we'll have an encounter, and it's part of the learning process and you'll get really good at recognizing errors over the years. So take care, get your hands dirty in the coat, and until next time, be good.